Good, Good morning. morning, viewers. It is 7.36 a.m. And welcome back to the Tobago Updates Morning Show coming to you here live from the Port Mall in Scarborough, Tobago. Viewers, in this segment, we are chatting with Melissa Yearwood-Jack, Community Outreach Program Officer for TEMA. And we are speaking National Disaster Prevention and Preparedness Month. Good morning to you and welcome. Good morning. All right, as we get the conversation started this morning, uh, Mel, I know Tima mm -hmm. um, speaks to responsibilities here for uh, emergency management and so in Tobago. Mm -hmm. But give us a sense in terms of um, this joining at the national level uh, for the National Disaster Prevention and Preparedness Month. Okay, well, this month we are part collaborating with the ODPM to educate the public on how they could be prepared during um, or before hurricane season starts. As the public knows, the hurricane season begins at June 1st. So we chose May as disaster, the National Disaster Prevention and Preparedness Month to educate the public that what they should do to be prepared in case of a disaster, as well as the rainy season. You know, the rainy season brings all sorts of hazards to Tobago, especially flooding and landslides. So we are trying to educate the people on the things that they should be doing right now to be prepared for, the, for that. Excellent. And my information is that this is being done through an exposition uh, that takes place in this week. So give us some more details. What will be happening? And we're going to see the flyer coming up on screen as well. We had one exposition already at mm -hmm. the Port Mall on the 5th of May. We are mm -hmm. having another one at the Sid Gray Sporting Complex tomorrow, Friday 19th. We will be wanting to, to, along with our Tobago stakeholders who at the... Um, Expo will be WASA, the TTFS, the TTPS, the Department of Labor, the County Medical Office of Health, um, I think I'm missing, oh, the Department of Social Services, as well the ODPM will be there as well. They'll be coming down in the morning, as well as TEMA, to educate the public on what they should be doing right now. We are giving out, having given away, we are having tokens, we are having um, brochures, so it's going to be an exciting day. So we are, we are encouraging the public to come on by. And this is the Sid Gray Complex on the inside or it's going to no, be happening on the outside? It's at the car park. All right. So for easy access, folks, if you're passing on by, this is your opportunity. It's 10 a.m. Uh, in the morning. Mm -hmm. Give us a little feel. The time period is from 10 to 3. Yes. Uh, what can persons expect uh, across the day? Is it that you're expecting persons come spend the day with us or you're expecting persons to pass through? Just, just give persons an idea. We're expecting you all to pass through, visit all our stakeholders. Each of them have exciting information to give. And when you're finished, you can you know, tell a friend to pass through after. You know, you, you might be able to show off what you want, a little token, you know, and then you'll be excited to come and you know, test our prizes and stuff to see if they could win those exciting tokens too. We're trying to get that as an incentive for people to be excited about disaster preparedness and to get the information in their homes. All right. Tell us, Melissa, we very often... Um, we speak to TEMA uh, in terms of we're in an emergency, we're in a um, stressed position or situation. Give us a little bit about some of these, uh, you know, the critical support of some of these other stakeholder agencies, because what's clear is that TEMA doesn't only play a role to assist, but TEMA also seeks to coordinate these other resources, um, you know, that may have parts to play. We're talking about the fire service, the police service, WASA, and these other entities, mm -hmm. some of whom you're bringing together mm -hmm. uh, as you're participating as stakeholders. How is that kind of um, relations in, in, in the context of treating with actual emergencies for TEMA? You know, we, uh, we have in Tobago the, the TDMC, the Tobago Disaster Management Committee, where all those stakeholders meet every month. So it's not like we meet in for this for the first time. We meet every month to discuss the business of Tobago's and the disaster, well, how we could be ready, one, what events that are coming on. For example, we had jazz recently. What are the critical things that each stakeholder would bring to the table in uh, preparing ourselves for potential events in jazz? We have the... Um, hurricane season coming up, we have meetings to say, okay, what does the circulars have? What resources we have? How we could plan to make Tobago better in this upcoming hurricane season? And for example, um, myself and the safety officers have been going to the schools for February and March to talk to the principals about their emergency plan and creating their crisis committee. Um, we've been to, I think, 37 schools thus far. we have now starting to try to get them to do their drills because we have recognized that since 
2020, most schools haven't done a drill as well as haven't looked at their plan in any critical way. Some schools don't have a written plan. And because of that collaboration with the OSH department, we are able to go and talk to the principals about that. So we always collaborate. Right now, our planning unit, as well as the fire service, OSH and CMOH, are doing shelter checks at all our shelters to make sure our shelters are hurricane ready. And they're going to do a report to make sure and present it to that TDMC committee. And I'm glad you mentioned that because that was taking me to my next area. Contact information for persons uh, to realize that TEMA doesn't have to select you. You can have an interest as a group or organization in wanting to teach uh, those about and TEMA will make themselves available. Yes, yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about the contact information for persons who may wish to reach out saying, oh, I didn't know TEMA used to offer this. I thought I had to wait until TEMA came to me. And then I know I'm speaking from experience uh, with other programs mm -hmm. and activity where TEMA expressed that willingness and it came, came on in. So contact information for persons who may be interested in reaching out saying, hey, I have a group of young people, I have a group of adults in my community, etc." and we feel that like this is some knowledge mm -hmm. and information that we want to be able to benefit from well we have a very active facebook page we normally respond very quickly to messages on our facebook page you can also contact our number at 660 89 8479 sorry mm -hmm. <laughs> um and you have my i'm the community outreach program officer so my cell phone number is readily available at 756-5646 you can also email us at tima eoc at gmail.com all right so you've um, got... you could check also our website um if you're interested in becoming a cert volunteer we have a tab where you could sign up readily to be a cert volunteer as well all right excellent uh, tell us uh, the outcome thus far in terms of i know that at the beginning of the month you'd have had the first uh, exposition uh, mm -hmm. in this period of may that took place at the port mall mm -hmm. uh, what was the impact of that it was really good um we we were downstairs at the mall as i said and the public was re really was anxious for that information they were telling me that um, most of the questions that we asked even though like this what in the start of the rainy season when it's the start of the hurricane season we realized that even though it happens every year people don't have that information at hand you'll be surprised when i ask when is the start of the hurricane season people really don't know even though it happens every year and we are in the hurricane at the bottom of the hurricane belt but we are in the hurricane belt because we know we had flora so it will be surprising to know that people not very in, they're interested when we have it in front of them but they do not, don't know the information so people were excited to get that information at hand and they got the brochures to go home to you know have it on their fridge we have some hurricane preparedness flyers so we encourage them to have that information on their fridge with all the contact information for all the emergency stakeholders readily available would you say over the period of time that um, TEMA has been operating over the years that people have become, uh, what is it, more conscious, more educated, more informed? What would you say has been the progress from then to now um, in terms of these kinds of outreach efforts uh, in relation to, to TEMA? Are you seeing us heading in a progressive direction or TEMA still has to do most of the work for us to remind us consistently? I think it's uh, somewhere in between. We have gotten some strides into getting people to understand the importance of hurricane preparedness, but I just always say it's not a sexy topic. So unless something is happening or we have um, a threat, then people are more interested. You see an influx of um, comments on our page seeking for information, but um, I would say it has gotten better since I've been at TEMA for the past seven years. But as I said, it's not really a sexy topic. So we still have to go out and seek, um, ask you to come to speak to you. But I could say, last, before COVID, we've gotten more and more requests to come and speak to our schools, come and speak to our students. I remember this year, um, myself and the officer from the County Medical Office of Health normally has every year, Keep Tobago a hard target. We have had that campaign for about well, you know, COVID kind of restricted yes. us for about five years, and we go to talk to all the camps and all the schools. And this year, Skyrosec reached out to us for us to talk to them about um, disaster preparedness. So we didn't have to go and seek, but we always have these campaigns going on and as a result of our collaborations as well excellent before we wrap this morning just again remind our viewers it's happening tomorrow if we can have that flyer back up on screen just remind them of the details and coming out where they should be tomorrow at some point during the day <laughs> we are encouraging 
all persons from the Roxborough area or from the north of Tobago to come out and see us tomorrow, Friday, 19th of May, at the Sid Gray Sporting Complex car park from, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're excited to reach you. We have a lot of giveaways. We have a lot of information from our stakeholders, and I know you'll have a good time. And you, uh, even if you don't have the, the you, I know you have a good time, but I know you'll be able to give that information to your family and friends and you have loads of questions to ask us and we'll be readily available there to answer any question. All right. Any other information you'd like to share before we close this morning, Melissa? Um, we just want to make the public aware that, um, as I said, even though it's not the sexiest of topic, the wet season is, up, is coming. I know it's going to be coming very soon and the Hurricane season will be beginning June 1st. We encourage you to have a family communications plan. Talk to your family of what you're going to be doing in this hurricane season. Where's your family must appoint? Have a emergency kit ready with all the items available. Um, you could get that information on our website as well as prepare infrastructure. You don't wait until rains come to prepare infrastructure. Now is the time when it's a dry season to easily prepare your infrastructure. All right, thank you so much, Melissa. Yeah, with Jack joining us here on set. My classmate as well, Community Outreach Program Officer Tima. And thank you so much. And you know, it's times like these when we are not necessarily um, in an emergency or uh, treating with a disaster that we want to say kudos to Tima because I think far and wide Tobago is indeed very proud of your efforts, especially when we hear others outside of Tobago speaking about the fact that, wow, you all seem to have things under so much control and you are prepared and you are ahead of time. So kudos going out to Tima and the entire team there uh, for continuing to do an excellent job and really seeking to provide that necessary support, ready and able uh, to support Tobago as may be required at any time when circumstances uh, may happen. Viewers, once again, we want to thank you so much for joining us here on the Tobago Updates Morning Show. Coming up next, viewers, we have Andrew Smith, owner and designer of Precision Cut Tailoring. All right, and he will certainly be joining us here on set as we speak to uh, upcoming Precision Cut Tailoring short course program graduation. Certainly working to help develop and to expand those skills, and we look forward to that upcoming discussion. Viewers, once again, we want to say thank you. Thank you for choosing the Tobago Updates Morning Show. Those of you connecting with us uh, on the TV, if you're sitting down, you're probably having your cup of coffee, you're probably having your milk tea, your chocolate tea, uh, whatever it may be, a vanilla flavor, whatever it may be. And those of you, the hustle and the bustle on the way uh, to work, listening into us on the radio or connecting on your device, this is your opportunity to share the live, share the live, share the live.